Interesting question that I get every time. So the question was, can you teach a dog to alert on a different scent in a different way? And the answer is yes, you can. So we talked yesterday about, for example, with handler discrimination, where the dogs are finding my odor on an article or on a little wooden Mondio ring for other uh, kind of obedient style forms of scenting detection. Uh, there's a retrieve portion to that. And so if I have very, very clear pictures and very, very clear differences, the dogs absolutely can learn to detect different things and have different alerts for them. Uh, what I tell people when I get this question in class is that yes, I could technically teach a dog to alert on birch one way and anise another way and clove another way. It's incredibly difficult. You have to be very gifted as a trainer and have huge attention to detail. And most people are not going to be able to carry that through. And it's also just not necessary. So at least as of right now, today, there's not a sport that says, your dog needs to detect it, and then you have to be able to tell me what it is. So that hasn't been created yet. So especially if you're new to this, you're better off sticking with this system for sure, doing all of your essential oils, and then once you have it down and you understand the process, then if you want to take a second dog and start monkeying around with it, you definitely can. You also want to be careful if you intend to compete with a dog that you want to play around with this with, because I mentioned that in some of the organizations, you have to say what your alert is. And so it has to be completely consistent throughout. You don't get to say, my dog will alert differently for different odors. It has to be one set alert that your dog is going to demonstrate throughout the entire trial. So if you've purposely taught your dog different alerts, you would not be able to compete in the organizations where you have to have a solid alert. So just think about those things. So as a trainer, I talk about it all the time. If, if the first couple dogs I had as a professional trainer could talk, they would tell you all kinds of things that I did to them, right? So I think I trained my first agility dog. I probably taught him the weave pull six or seven different ways. Not for him and not for competition, but because I was experimenting with different methods and wanted to see what worked best and the challenges of each. And so what I tell everybody is that's great. Like, as my dogs would tell you these stories about all the fun things we got to do, they would mainly be telling you about all the great rewards and all the fun time they had learning the weave pulls six different ways. So if you can stay fair to your dog and positive with the experiences for your dog, understand that there's going to be fallout and not get mad at your dog for that, then absolutely experiment. Like it's good as a blossoming trainer to try different things and try different methods, but you have to stay fair to the dog. So you can't get frustrated with the dog when they're confused and there's conflict because you're asking the dog to do now two things that are very, very different and that they're confused about that. And so some people are better at that than others. So one of the ways I used to de-stress when I first started training and I was working crazy hours and working for other people and myself and running an animal shelter and working at a vet clinic, I've worn lots of hats and, uh, over the years, uh, all that tie into dogs and behavior and everything else. Uh, I would just sit on my couch at the end of the night sometimes with a bowl full of food and just free shape stupid things for my dogs to do. So Dash, it's got muddied now through loaning him out to clients and things like that, but he used to have a slow, whole slew of behaviors he could do just with his mouth. So if you did this with your hands, very tiny little movement like this, he would snap his teeth at you. If you went like this, he would lift his lip. If you did this, he would bark. I had all these really intricate little hand things that all were cues of stuff he was supposed to do with his mouth. And he absolutely understood the difference and it was really great. But as soon as you let your friends start doing it or your boyfriend start doing it and they muddy the waters, it, it gets muddy for the dog real quick. Now, if you do anything with your hand, he just barks at you because that's the easiest one to do. So he'll, he'll sit there and wolf at you. But it was great. It was great fun, and I would just sit there, and it had no purpose. But it was a way to de-stress. It was a way to have fun with my dogs. I talk all the time. You'll hear this time and time again. No practice is better than bad practice. So if you're not in a state of mind to train your dog for precision-type activities, uh, competition obedience and agility exercise detection, but you have a dog that still needs to be mentally stimulated, Trick training, do fun tricks, teach them silly things just so they're getting mental stimulation. It'll get you out of your funk. You won't be so worried about, oh man, my dog's nose was a quarter of an inch the wrong way or I missed something. So it's not totally related to scenting detection, but for dog training in general, Anytime I have a client that I feel like is getting overly frustrated with the process of training, I always take a break and take him through trick training. 
So a lot of dog trainers uh, kind of snuff their noses at trick training, but the reality is it's dog training just the same, right? So uh, the dogs don't care. They don't really care what they're learning. They're just happy to have a fun experience with you and get out and do some training and use their mind and all that good stuff. So our attitude about it tends to be better and happier and more upbeat. We tend to laugh at our failures versus if we're doing a precision discipline, we tend to get very down on ourselves, very hard on ourselves. And even if we're not to the dog, sensitive dogs will pick that up. So I had pit bulls for 20 something years and those dogs are incredibly sensitive to your state of mind. I have Malinois now and cattle dogs also very sensitive to your state of mind. Some cattle dogs don't care about your state of mind but they know when there's a difference, right? So uh, the Malinois definitely do. Some of them, I shouldn't say that. My younger female, her solution to everything is to punch you in the stomach. That makes everything better. My male, if he knows that you're in a funk, he definitely behaves very differently. He's much more in tune to that, hence why he's my service dog. But anyway, so experiment as much as you want, as long as you're fair to your dogs, and as long as you understand what your goals for that dog are. If you have aspirations to compete with this dog, make sure you're not doing things that are going to sabotage that.